She's you can be my Yoko Ono. Whoa, whoa. You will follow me wherever I go. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to uh, send that tune out to the peanut gallery of the Crafty Boys. You know who you are. <laughs> Welcome to episode 138 of the Crafty Boys. I picked the beer again. And he actually picked it this time. Yes. What is it, Shane? I totally <laughs> forgot. But that's okay. Alan was like, you're an idiot. It's you, you fool, like you bailed out of the previous week, so you better pick one now. And I'm like, get some. Uh, this week is Moody Blues. Uh, <laughs> wow uh, we're bringing them out of retirement uh, da -da 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 -da. thanks dave uh moody moody hills uh sublime pineapple have a horizon it is a beer that, quite literally, I just looked up uh, for about two seconds going, I haven't picked the beer! And then I spent about ten seconds looking at it going, where is it? Good, I can get it. Screw you two. Uh, and then sent you a link, and there you go, boys. So uh, I'm assuming you guys got it. Yes, I did get it. Uh, Dave? Oh, oh. you bastard! It wasn't the Courtney one. No, it wasn't because I looked it up and I didn't see it. <laughs> they had 14 as of this uh, morning. All right. Anyway, All right. I'm going to go look right now because I want to know why you couldn't get it. Okay. Because and while Shane's only, doing that. There's only well, so many things with pineapple in them in this world of beer. So the Moody Ale Sublime Pineapple Hefeweizen uh, is a, a Hefeweizen. Uh, type of beer uh it is uh on the lightness uh color scale it's got a dry finish and the clarity says that it's leaning towards kind of halfway between clear and cloudy now i don't know about you shane but when i look at my bottle and i haven't opened it yet it looks very cloudy. it does look very cloudy very cloudy in fact i can see uh deposits of trub down here at the there bottom. There is a lot of there's a lot of trub on the bottom. That is true, which yes. means that it's unfiltered, uh, unrehearsed. On un, well, actually, it's basically a, everything. A beer that represents our particular show. So, uh, I'm so let's open, open it now. I uh, Dave, I know it was it was a uh, where the hell's my bottle opener? There it is. It was a guess of whether or not you could actually get it. I thought that maybe. You might stumble across it at Cascadia, but um, that, that was my hope as well. Okay, so I does smell up, like trub or my... trub. <laughs> trub. Have you already been partaking tonight? Who me, Shane? No, no. Why, okay. why would you? Why would you say that? Well, I don't know. You just seem kind of scattered. Maybe. Maybe I'm smelling. Know. I'm smelling definitely pineapple. So uh, I just want to point out the side label. Um, it's a uh, pineapple head guy uh, reclining on, I'm assuming, a, I don't know, an uh, inflatable mattress on the water. Um, but the thing that struck me is this thing is he looks like the 7-Up guy. Remember the uh, that, that ad? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the guy was like, hey, drink 7-Up and you'll be cured of disease or whatever. Right. Um, yeah, that guy. Remember that guy? Yeah, you guys remember that guy. Sure. Yeah, he does kind of look like that. Um, so mine kind of looks like pineapple juice is what it looks like. It like, smells it pineapple. smells fruity. Hmm. <laughs> that has an a sour kick I was not expecting. <laughs> it, ha it has a bit of tartness to it, but not a lot. Um, well, I just I was expecting like fruit juice, mm. but um, I was not rewarded with said juice. Um, <laughs> okay, so it says here, let's... mix together German yeast, American hops, and pineapple juice, and it adds up to sunshine. That's beer math. 
But enough studying for today at summertime. This beer may be cloudy, but the weather isn't. So go outside, enjoy the sun, and cool down with a sessionable, fruity, refreshing brew. The international beer units are 16. The srim is three. I don't know what that is. Uh, the og is uh, something else, which I, uh, who cares? Um, my actually, uh, the uh, the food pairing, they actually have food pairings on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Maui ribs, which I'm assuming are sweet ribs. Ooh, that sweet. would be a good combo. Uh, tacos La Pastor. Nachos and salsa. Cloudy is high, sweet is medium, and color is light. Now, um, overall, I give this one a thumbs up. I was not I, you know, quite honestly, I think that we might have got it a bit too early. Um, so is this a, is this a seasonal? Is this a seasonal? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna look it up on his website because I was gonna look it up anyway. Um, is this a featured beer? It is not. Uh, they do have some uh, other cool stuff, like they have a, an Imperial Russian Stout, which apparently is in their roster. But as for whether or not this is a seasonal, view all beer, uh, limited edition or seasonal, would be nice if the link worked, uh, which it doesn't, so there you go. Uh, yes, this is a seasonal uh, available now at private and BC liquor stores. Um, it's also available in their tasting room. Doesn't really have a whole lot of information beyond that, what we read off the bottle. So, yeah, it is It is definitely a, a seasonal beer. I'm assuming it's their oh. summer. So, hey, it works. So, uh, I'm really liking this. Um it's not quite what I was expecting, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Uh, I, I'm liking it. I am finding it to be kind of, um, I don't know if you're finding the same thing, a little bit burpy. I just burped. So, yes, I, yeah, I actually got um, a lot of, uh, of uh, air on this one. Hey, Peter Gallery. Come here. So What's if you're like... There? So if you're like maybe on a first date or something with somebody and you want to impress them, this may not be the beer to have at that <laughs> event. But if you're with a bunch of friends and everything and they don't care if you're like belching everywhere, uh, then this is a good good choice. Well, have you ever uh, have you ever wondered uh, about the perfection of the simultaneous burp fart? Perfection? Have you ever well, have been you able practiced to this? This is can you do that? Is it even possible? Haven't you? Insane. Can you do both? I mean, isn't that kind of one of those things where you know, like, that would cause like a disruption in the space-time continuum, causing like all life to implode? <laughs> isn't it always the small things that destroy the universe? <laughs> you know, like the plastic patch of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and the burp fart of Northern Ireland that destroyed the Earth by sucking it into a uh, <laughs> large black hole that formed uh, underneath the pub <laughs> where where the simultaneous burp fart was. Uh, we got to give this a, a better <laughs> name, though. Simultaneous burp fart is... Uh, is not um maybe what? we should call it like a furt. I'm gonna see if there's actually I'm gonna look up the urban dictionary and see if there's actually okay. a uh, a word. Uh, I don't think it's medically possible to do both at the same time. Well, here we go. Here is Quora asked, oh, only asked recently, uh in uh October of 2017, and answered April 9th, 2018. The question being is it possible for someone to fart and burp at exactly the same time? The answer from the from a guy who says he studied at the School of Flatulence and Fart Sciences. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it possible, but this great act has a name. The action is known as a FERP. That's the what I just said. FERP is not so uncommon. Is not is it not? Blah, 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 blah. 
a FERP is a not so uncommon occurrence and it is perfectly safe. However, rumor has it that a FERP combined with a sneeze known as a burp snart can cause instant death. <laughs> This cannot be independently verified, but it, it is advisable to avoid the burp snart if possible. In other words, never force a FERP. You can learn more at the FartShare website at fartshare.com. I'm checking. I have to know if this is a real thing. Yep, there's a website called fartshare.com. <laughs> so uh the FERP is a perfectly safe uh event. It is said that the FERP combined with a sneeze is a burp snart. Uh <laughs> you can use this. <laughs> I can't believe this is the thing. I'm FERPing like crazy, yo! It's coming out both ends. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently fartshare.com sponsor us, you jerks, uh, is uh, something uh, they, they, <laughs> there seems to be a fact of the day being the atomic fart bomb. <laughs> if, you if you have farted for seven years straight, you would produce the same amount of energy as the atomic bomb. But please don't try. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you have to check this website out at some point, especially their uh, podcast called 11 uh, Seconds of Ass. So there you go. Uh, I don't want to know what the 11 seconds is. Now, I will also <laughs> say that uh, if you if you Google simultaneous burp fart. <laughs> Not only is the question and link to the website of fartshare.com sponsor us, uh, <laughs> maybe we should sponsor it's, them. It's the first hit, the rest of them are videos of human beings <laughs> farting and burping simultaneously. <laughs> Somebody, uh, claiming that they had a sneeze, fart, burp, hiccup, cough all at once called the Snicklar Farp. Um, <laughs> Somebody actually uh, having an unprecedented simultaneous sneeze burp fart. Uh, and my favorite, of course, for all you lovers of cats out there, cat hiccups and farts at the same time. <laughs> These are videos going back all the way to 2008. And according to the Dictionary of the Urban Persuasion, <laughs> are you sure you want to go to Taco Bell for lunch? You know, it makes you, you know that it makes you furp. Uh, <clears throat> Alrighty. So there you go. The burp fart <laughs> FERP, sorry, is uh, an actual thing. And I certainly hope that you out there do not ever experience the Kluchkafluk uh or whatever that other thing I read was, uh, where you could in theory cause a black hole or just spontaneously die. <laughs> is it ever spontaneous? I guess it is. Uh or can be. Um wow. What a way to start a show, boys. Talking about well, well that we really went down the rabbit hole there. We um did. I wanted to know hey, it kind of gives new meaning to the Moody Ale's hearty brown ale. Yeah. <laughs> hey Dave, what what are you drinking? This would be the megahertz Belgian ESB. Oh, who's that from? Oh, Phillips. Be Phillips. As mm. usual, it's got a wicked label. Mm -hmm. I'm a total sucker for Phillips labels. They're awesome. Yes, they're very good. Um, so, so what do you think? I like it's maybe a little hoppier than I would like. Yeah. But that's okay. It's tasty. I like it. It's uh, a little hard to tell. It's pretty um, red. In fact, it's very red. Not the reddest we've seen. Uh, not the darkest we've seen. But mm -hmm. 
getting there. And if you don't pour it carefully, it's got a hell of a head on it too. It's not much going on there this time. I was really careful with it, but it's tasty. I like it. It's worth trying, boys. Definitely. Okay. I can even tell you what it says on the label here. Ready to blow the breakers. Megahertz is a fully charged with complex yet harmonious toasted fruit and pepper notes. I hey, I'm just reading this shit. Balanced <laughs> hops and malts fuse this Belgian ESB, creating a beer that is current and powerful enough to short circuit your box. Surge the grid. Wow. Black out the neighborhood. There you go. That's the megahertz. Wow. Fortunately, it doesn't have anything about a beer unit's clarity. Nothing. Oh. Okay, so so tell me, what is an ESB? That's a really good question. All I know is it stands for extra special bitter okay good enough that's all i know and it's a belgian it's a belgian esb i believe we've had an esb before which is actually part of the reason i got this okay because i recalled liking it Shane, uh which one huh ah, sorry i <laughs> wasn't paying attention <laughs> You was busy furting. I was busy furping. <laughs> furping, furping, yes. Actually, I was trying to find the uh, the website for uh, for Stanley Park Brewing, but I can't seem to find one. Oh, okay. Or sorry, their address, not their website. I found their website. I just can't find their address. Um, Have we done an ESB? I thought we had. ESPs we have done. I'm actually looking here because I actually I'm going to our private beer style chart, uh, and it looks like we have done one ESB. Who buy though? I'm kind of curious. I might have only marked it as a bitter though. We did. I know that we did a bomber uh, ESB uh, ages ago. Um, yeah, so I've actually only marked them as as uh, as bitters. So uh, the bitters we've done are the uh, Driftwood Brewery Naughty Hildegard, which is an ESB, right? Mm. Uh, as well as the bomber ESB from like uh, episode two or something or four. <laughs> it was a long time. We did. We did. We actually, it was combined in actually, actually, yeah, here it is. It was combined in episode eight. Uh, we had the IPA and the ESB at the same brewery. So, so that was whatever the hell that was uh, back in 2015. Um, so, but there's no other bitters. Yeah, let's just those two. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll we'll add a third one today. Yes. So the uh, okay. so what have you, what's uh, what's been going on in the world this week? Uh, we had the unfortunate thing that happened in Saskatchewan. Yes. Uh, the bus crash with the semi trailer truck. Uh, from the, uh, the the hockey team from uh, I, 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 I'm, uh, uh, yeah, and I'll just I'll just stop. I don't know if it's just me on my end, but Shane, you are Cyloning pretty bad here. It's probably you because your thing sucks. What about you, yeah. Dave? Can you hear me fine? I am actually hearing. I wouldn't characterize it as Cyloning, but okay, it's uh, it's close to it. It's really, it's weird. Suddenly, suddenly you're okay, Shane. So anyway, you, you continue on with what you're talking about. Uh, well, yeah, the, um, the uh, Humboldt, Saskatchewan uh, bus crash, the uh, what else is happening? Uh, Trump in the States is going to jail, um, or at least his <laughs> no, it's not. 
uh his lawyer is at least or supposedly yeah um what else has gone on in the world in this past seven days since we last met well you know the the bus crash has kind of gripped this nation <clears throat> uh since it happened on friday um so there's lots of uh you know outpouring of, of support uh, there's all these kinds of things that have kind of uh, brought this country, the people of this country together. Um, yeah. People leaving hockey sticks out on the front porch in case the, the boys need it. Tomorrow is Jersey Day. And people are encouraged to wear their favorite sports jersey, uh, hockey, baseball, whatever, uh, tomorrow. And no matter what they're doing, whether they're going to work or whatever. In fact, I intend to, uh, my uh, employer, um, which is a big faceless corporation that I thought uh, would be against its employees doing something like that, but uh, sent out an email today encouraging all staff to wear uh, a jersey or sports shirt of some kind tomorrow in support of the, uh, the, uh, survivors of the bus crash um so i'm gonna wear my vintage minnesota north stars jersey which is the same colors as the humboldt broncos wow. so i think that's fitting and that's what i'm gonna wear tomorrow um nice yeah. there is yeah. a great uh political cartoon uh out of toronto um where it is talking about tomorrow being uh, jersey day and it has all of the provinces in sort of team canada jerseys uh all sort of milling around and a bunch of them carrying saskatchewan which is in a uh the player is in a green jersey um and isn't able to walk he's just being kind of helped along so i thought that was a really great image mm. of uh, of, uh, of Sort of what's going on, and by the way, I have to also mention uh, I have watched about two hours worth of the uh, Zuckerberg in front of the uh, U.S. Senate, uh, which has yeah. been going on for the past. Uh, getting back to the whole, but back know, to the other thing, that, I just didn't want to forget the one thing. Mm -hmm. um, well, not thing, but you know, tragedy. Um, could you imagine? I mean. This is something that's kind of brought everybody together in Canada um, from all walks of life right across the country. Do you think the same kind of thing could ever happen in the States? Let's say I, I would say no, uh, because if it were if if a tragedy was able to pull the entire country together um in a lot of ways um but i d haven't seen it yet because they've had quite a few tragedies in the last while so um but again uh i don't know i i think that I would like to believe that that is possible anywhere, not just here. Um, I don't think it's a possible anywhere. I wouldn't have believed that it was possible here, actually. I'm glad that it is. Yeah. Why wouldn't you believe it's possible here? Um... I don't know. I, I, I can't put my finger on that. It's just, it's not something that maybe because, and I, I don't want to sound callous here, uh, given the gravity of the situation, um, but it was a junior team. I mean, let's face it, before last week, and I'm a hockey fan. I've never, I had never heard of the, of the uh, Humboldt Broncos before last week um that doesn't make the lives lost insignificant or anything like that it's just 
I would have expected more of this kind of outpouring of support for, say, a well-known entity. Um, accidents happen every day. People die every single day in tragic ways, but they don't receive the same kind of outpouring of support that mm. this particular situation has. Now, maybe it's because so many of the people involved were young, uh, you know, just starting their lives and hope, you know, some sort of professional success that few people really have the talent to make it as far as they did. Um, so I don't know what it is, but I'm pleasantly surprised that we have come together like this and focused on this tragedy so uh, on a national scale to this level. And I'm proud of the fact that I, I firmly believe that this same kind of thing wouldn't happen in the States. Because if it did happen in the States, you'd have half of the people blaming Obama for it and the other <laughs> half of people blaming the NRA or whatever. I don't know. Um <laughs> That sounds about right, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, and and like I say, I mean, I'd never heard of the humble Broncos before uh, last Friday. But uh, even still, uh, it kind of got me a bit choked up. And I don't know why that is. I don't know any of those people personally. I've never had any kind of... I'm not even familiar with who they are. How old's your oldest? Uh, my oldest is 18. So he's kind of right in that age bracket. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, I have that understanding as well, that while these these people would probably legally be classified as men, um, you know, my own son being kind of that same age, I still see him as a kid, <laughs> you know. Too young anyway. Mm. But that's the way it goes sometimes, right? Things happen. Yeah. Yeah. You just hope that they don't happen to you. Well, yeah, exactly. Because um, I can't imagine. I'm not a parent. I can't imagine losing a kid. That's got to be one of the worst things that can happen to you. I am a parent, and I can't imagine it, and I don't want to imagine it. So. Yeah. That's all that all there is to that. Okay, moving on. So I'm okay, curious, so Shane, Zuckerberg, Shane. I want to yeah. want a little more detail on that because I've only heard about it. I haven't watched any of the footage. I refuse, <laughs> but I'm curious. <laughs> um. Well, essentially, it is uh, like people realize that their data is being used when they have known all along well they should have known all they along. should have known yeah but you know uh, a lot of people like to live in the world of denial um but the uh big thing for for me is the lack of uh knowledge that the senators have been uh, uh, have been showing it's yeah. Sorry, exhibiting. You're giving me words. Thank you. Um, but essentially, yeah, they are. Uh, th you can tell which ones are trying to score political points, uh, based on the fact that they don't actually know what the hell they're talking about. So you'll see uh, a number of the senators, uh, usually right-leaning senators, of course, um, trying to get 
uh, Zuckerberg to somehow admit that Facebook uh, blocks or somehow downplays conservative values, um, which Zuckerberg kept saying, no, we don't. Sorry, <laughs> but the but it, they kept doing it like they, they kept doing it, trying to somehow pull information out of him that just wasn't there, um, which to me at one level, uh, it was pretty pathetic. Uh, but on another, uh, if you don't actually know what intelligent questions to ask regarding uh, the you know buying and selling of, of people's information, uh, from from not just Facebook, from other companies too, um, that they just didn't know what to do. They didn't quite understand. Uh, a lot of them obviously didn't understand what a terms of service actually means. Uh, a lot of them didn't understand um, uh, that. Oh yeah, no, it was it was some of them were. They were asking. There was one senator who kept asking about. Uh, who who was involved, the people that were involved with the data breach, uh, or not the data breach, it wasn't even a breach, it was just a, a third party sold the data. Yeah. Um, they wanted to know if that company had been blocked, and he said, yes, of course. And they kept asking, no, no, uh, have they been blocked? And it took the guy about three or four tries to, and he didn't even get there. Zuckerberg eventually was like, are you talking about their individual accounts? Um, as the individuals, and he's like, "Yes, if they've been blocked, they won't know. The company has been blocked, but not the individuals that might have been involved. Sure, why? Why would we? There, sure, this thing happened, but it happened from the entity of uh, a large company. But the people that work there, even the people that run the company, uh, with the exception of I think the CEO and somebody else, uh, their personal accounts were blocked." Uh, or were taken down uh, because of this whole situation, but they kept it was it was like they didn't quite know what the definition they were trying to they weren't they didn't know what the information they were trying to ask because they kept asking the same thing over and over again, um, and it became clear after the second time that the guy just didn't understand <laughs> what the difference was. So mm -hmm. rather than pausing and saying, "Granted, now in in all of these individuals' defense, uh, they only had I think four minutes." Um, to in which they could ask their question. So there was one lady today. Uh, so this today was day two of the whole thing. And I, I don't know if they're going to a day three. Maybe they are. Um, she was trying to be sounding all self-righteous uh, by uh, basically uh, telling him off in a roundabout kind of way. Um, but that was even worse. Uh, because she was trying to sound like she knew what she was talking about, which clearly she didn't. Um, but she had been given information or she sussed it out herself about situations around the whole face, you know, the fact that Facebook exists. And it was, it was, it was sad. It was, it was, it was beyond pathetic. It was that kind of thing where you're like, you just are not smart enough to be in the room and you are justifying your existence here as trying to bully Zuckerberg into something. She was asking him questions, like very detailed questions about information that I don't think anyone would know. Mm. So, uh, and then doing that thing, well, you're the CEO, you should know. And I'm like, no, no CEO on the, on the planet with thousands of employees are going to know everything. Like, I mean, and, and they accept answers like, you know, well, I don't know the answer, but you know what? I'll put that on my follow-up list and I'll send you to your office information to answer your question. And a lot of them are like, cool, that's awesome. Thanks so much. Because we only have four minutes. But this woman just was not letting up. She kept asking again and again. Um, and then berate, ask, berate, ask, berate. Uh, well, of course you don't know the answer, but you're the CEO. You should know. And it, it was, I don't know, it was just sad. And after seeing a number of that, those kinds of exchanges, um, they're all concerned about how much time they have to ask their questions, yet they're not smart enough to ask intelligent questions at all. Mm. Um, they were just, a lot of them, you know, just, are you blocking conservative, somebody who likes abortions and somebody who doesn't, and you're going to block the person who doesn't? And he's like, no, we don't. Um, 
you know, it's uh, the, the hate speech is hate speech. If either party from whatever line you want or Joe Smith out in the field or whatever in the new urban center, uh, they can have their opinions. But if they break hate speech laws, then yeah, we have the right to take that stuff down. But uh, yeah, it was just, it was weird. So, but it's, but at the end of the day, it's all very important because the one thing he said today was about how uh, it's inevitable that, you know, companies like Facebook and, and Google and all, all these large companies um, will be regulated to, to a degree because um, ISPs kind of fall into that as well, where the regulations that they currently have need to be expanded in a grander sense because, uh, you know, the, when the internet started back in 1993 for the general public, um, that is not then like now it's a different beast a hundred times over since then so yeah but it's interesting to watch because it is as as much as you love or hate zuckerberg um he is still a human being at the end of the day and a lot of the time he's just trying to try he knows so much about the technology he's trying to not speak in that sort of nerdy way he's trying to explain things in a very basic way um and when it does get complex he says well i can i can give you more information later um but you know the answer is 700 pages long rather than you know a few minutes that they have yeah so I can't give it to you in a sound bite mm -hmm. totally too totally too uh, true because I, you just you just want to kind of you just want to slap them around a little bit to try and get them to ask questions that actually make sense because they just don't. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been hearing a lot of noise about the Republicans getting their asses handed to them in November, and I'm curious if that's part of their whole trying to go hard on Zuckerberg you know, trying to score points with their base or whatever the fuck they call it down there. You know, he's trying to look like, yeah, sticking it to the rich fat cat West Coast jerk off man that doesn't get the poor working stiff <laughs> in the middle. All that bullshit. In the swamp. In the swamp too, yes. Which is a little more east, I think. But uh, anyways. Yeah. Gonna drain the swamp. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. you, you, I gotta say, uh, the people that were elected based on that argument are um, completely... Uh, yeah. They they haven't drained anything. They've added to it. So they've, they're bathing in it now. But uh, yeah. I gotta go drain the swamp, man. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. But um, you know, uh, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't think that uh, you know this particular event is going to solve anything, nor is it going to really establish much, yeah. um, except the fact that people don't understand how it works. Um. But I, I would welcome regulation to a certain degree. I think that it's uh, not a terrible plan. I wouldn't. You wouldn't what? I wouldn't want regulation on the internet. No, no, on, on companies like Facebook. Okay, so who's going to dole out these regulations? Are the U.S. Is the U.S. going to impose this on the world? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it has for the I most go. part already. Well, it has... But is that right? No. The oh, Dave. internet is a global phenomenon. What business does the United States have to exert its will on the rest of the world? I know it does it. It has done it for decades. But is that right? I don't think it is. I'm not sure anybody would uh, argue that. Except the Americans. Oh, of course. Now, I, I with wish... Facebook, I can understand it because Zuckerberg is an American. It is an American creation operated in 
you know, the confines of the United States, seemingly. Um, Are they, though? The wide web. Would they not have server farms elsewhere in the world? Well, you would think. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm only guessing. Uh, well, idea. yeah, ex exactly. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Um, but it's uh, it's kind of like... I can tell you exactly where they are. Okay, perfect. But uh, but I'll wait till you are done. Okay, so it's it's kind of like um, the Pirate Bay. Are you guys familiar with the Pirate Bay? Yep. Me? Okay. No, so, not at all. Okay, so not at all. <laughs> no, I don't know what the Pirate. I've Bay. never heard of it. I've never heard of it. <laughs> um. So, uh, uh, for those who may not know, Pirate Bay was a uh, um an illegal file sharing uh, service. Actually, I think it's still up, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it, it was operated uh, on offshore servers from, I, I think, wasn't it Sweden? Originally, yeah. Originally, but afterwards it operated elsewhere and there was different people with different uh with uh copies of the original uh site so that if one that was active got taken down somebody else could bring it back up but anyway uh the u.s was trying to impose its uh will to have this thing shut down regardless of the laws of other countries is that right? Is it right for what do you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm for everybody. For everybody. Is it oh, right for the no, US no. to impose its own laws on the rest of the world? No. Of course not. So there you go. I was waiting for Dave to say something, but it's like, I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, agree I don't Alan. know about this technology you keep talking about. I agree with Alan. No. It's not. I think I think it was before before Trump was elected. Like long before. Uh maybe in the uh election lead up. And there was some U.S. senators or something, maybe it was Trump himself, that was suggesting that we need to have tighter controls over the Internet. And they suggested, can't we just shut down the sites of, like, ISIS and all that? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> how do you propose? How, how do you do that? Manage that? How do you do that? Unless, unless ISIS stupidly runs his servers on U.S. based uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, how, how do you do that? It's like they feel that they own the Internet. And they don't. And as, as speaking as to Facebook, and I think I've mentioned this before. I don't know if I mentioned it here, but I mentioned it somewhere. <clears throat> if you are a user of Facebook, where you don't pay any money to use it. And you didn't think that maybe they were using your information for their own purposes or somebody else's purposes, giving them money. Then you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> then you can suck a bag of dicks. Yes. Um, I would have to agree that not i mean when you think of it this way facebook google youtube um all these large companies offer us a whole bunch of services for nothing if you want to uh set up websites if you want to share photos if you want to do email all these sorts of things um you know, it's given away freely. And 
in the case of Google, you can also have access to the pay uh, version of that, which has a few additional features. Um, but essentially, uh, these organizations are, they have to run these large systems uh, in a, you know, very real way. Um, yeah, sorry, I was going to look up Facebook data centers, and they do have several. Um, they have uh, most of their server locations are in within the U.S. Um, however, they are also located uh, in Sweden. Um, I believe uh, there are two locations. Uh, and they're run. I mean, they're running full, huge data centers now. Where uh, the one that I actually find very interesting is in a place called Altoona, Iowa, which is like almost dead smack in the middle of um, of, uh, of of the, the country, and actually North America as well. Um, and if you look on uh, the facility that they built there, it's massive. It is massive. So is there a way around this to uh, you know, make uh, this somehow more efficient or whatnot? Um, unfortunately, there isn't. You, uh, the current technology, you have to have a lot of processing power in order to keep the websites running. And uh, Facebook is something like 300,000 servers now or something, um, mm. but probably more than that. Um, especially with those multiple uh, locations. Uh, Google, same sort of thing. They've got data centers all over the place. Um, they've, they've got something like 70 or 80 now. Um, wow. They're and, probably spread over the planet, though, right? Yeah, they're, they're all over the place. I was, I was just looking at the, uh, the one that the Facebook data center in uh, Sweden. So if you think of Sweden, can you picture Sweden in your mind? Um, the Facebook data center is like way in the north. Um, sort of close to the border with Finland. And I know that the, uh, I think it's at a place called Lipetrana or Lipetrana. I've, I, I don't remember, but uh, Google moved there because there was a large facility for some sort of manufacturing, uh, like a huge, humongous building uh, that Google just gutted and repurposed to be a data center. So, um, and, and and that is in Finland, sort of on the eastern side, and sort of near the border with uh, with uh, Russia. So, um, but that's only a few other data centers. I mean, that's there's all, they're all over the place. I don't mm. think Google has any data centers in Canada. Um, I don't think Facebook does either. Um, but uh, yeah, they're it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts uh, about how much power, how much energy, how much uh, you know oomph these these uh, companies have in terms of hardware, software, and people that they have to actually run it. Um, and when you're giving away products for nothing, I think Google might be one of the first companies that gets uh, that partners with governments. I mean, they already are. Um, but partnering with governments in order to uh, facilitate uh, services that are useful. So, mm -hmm. you know, countries using Google data centers, Google uh, product to run everything. Um, is that terrifying and scary? Yeah, it is. Um, is it going to happen in our lifetime? Uh, you know, assuming Google will last uh, a long time, possibly. Uh, probably not. I mean, governments tend to run their own hardware and that kind of stuff in order to protect mm -hmm. them from the standards that the government requires. Um, but as for general public, I, I don't know. I don't, I mean, if Facebook, uh, I mean, Facebook offered email at one time, they took that away. Uh, Google has been offering email for uh, donkey's years. Um, and there really isn't a whole lot of option for people to get free services like that. Yahoo, uh, dying. Um, uh, what else? Um, web web hosting companies tend not to do that anymore. They don't offer free stuff. Uh, ISPs do, but they're trying to get out of that business as well. Um, 
so yeah i mean it, there's going to be really nowhere uh where you can you know protect uh all of your data all of your infrastructure all of your stuff unless uh we all decide that hey i'm going to put five servers here in my house and i'm going to run my email i'm going to run uh, all my websites i'm going to run all my you know uh calendaring etc um will people do that no of course not it's just not going to happen yeah and it doesn't matter because our ai robot overlords will be here at some point fairly shortly and um <laughs> to destroy us all hey man i've been watching westworld oh really yeah I've watched uh, the Holy first shit. five episodes, I think, of the first season, and then I stopped because I realized Allison was would probably get off on that show. So, uh, so don't give me any spoilers. I know right, the second no spoilers. season. I think I'm on six, episode six or seven at this point. Um, I will I say this: say, you know, yeah. it's one of the most impressive shows I have seen to date. I I like it because it reminds me of the video games Bioshock. Um, because the one theory that I have developed over these few episodes I've seen is I've often wondered, well, where exactly is this facility? And there's a few moments where they refer to it as people coming in from, I think the dock, uh, or the, the, no, the dock, the, what's the word they use? I can't remember anyway, but basically my theory is that Westworld is actually underwater is out in the ocean somewhere mm -hmm. um so yeah because remember you know when they go down to the basement there's always those waterfalls everywhere and things like that and you know a lot of I water i just assumed it was plumbing that had stopped functioning properly <laughs> <laughs> well i mean that i mean that could honestly that could be true i mean this is just my theory uh and i read it i've read a couple of people that have very similar sort of thoughts about it but where exactly in the ocean it would be um but yeah i don't know i overall um i wouldn't you know to be honest i would actually like to go back and watch the original westworld film from 1970 or 71 and then they had a sequel in 1976 uh that was called it wasn't called westworld it, was, it wasn't like westworld 2 it actually had a, a different name but uh it was a spiritual successor i think but um yeah i mean the, the whole it is a terrifying uh idea i mean here's here's the problem that, that we have right now is that um the way that emotions are created are very different from decisions so even though yes as human beings a lot of decisions are emotionally you know pushed forward uh, mm -hmm. but AI doesn't really have those. It doesn't really understand. It definitely it doesn't right now, but it doesn't really, I don't think it'll really understand how emotions would function. Because if you're making a decision, uh, kind of like HAL uh, 9000 from uh, 2001, uh, HAL is always sort of thought of or portrayed as being like a villain. But if you really step back and sort of watch what HAL does and what HAL says, Hal's just making logical decisions in order to protect, you know, sort of the main directive, whatever that, whatever you would think that is in, in the <clears throat> space odyssey world. Yeah. But, you know, there it's, it's kind of like, well, I'm, I'm doing this because of the, you know, I got to do these things. And it's like, open the doors or don't kill me or please don't stab me to death. Um, and you know, the robots like, well, yeah, I, I, I probably should, but, there's no other way around this because I've got to do that thing or protect that thing. And if you're in the way or trying to disable me from doing that thing, then I'm going to have to, you know, squeeze your head like a grape because that will stop you from doing that. It's not that I'm trying to be evil and <laughs> kill you all. No, it's like you're in my way, monkey. And if you don't like it, um, Hey, have you ever seen what an airlock does when you open it up in the vacuum of space? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, in fiction and fantasy, I think it's, you know, it's fine to give, to endow, you know, AI with, with emotions. But I think in reality, um, maybe in the very distant future, uh, freeze me now, wake me up then, 
Um, but I don't know. It's, it's a, it is, I mean, it's fun to play with. It's fun to think about, but right now, um, you could equate AI with being like an infant having a tantrum, maybe the odd time, but the tantrum isn't really emotionally based. So I don't know. Mm. Mm. But what what is your sort of what is your are you thumbs up thumbs down on Westworld? You, I'm assuming thumbs up. Oh, two thumbs way up. So good. I highly recommend it. It's, it's enjoyable to watch. It's uh, if you're somebody that needs your shows to be basically on afterburner the whole fucking time, forget it. If you're somebody that likes to go deep into ideas and story and character you'll like it uh because i found particularly i think it took me a couple of episodes and i'm a little slow on the uptake so you know maybe others wouldn't need this but i found that a couple episodes was what i needed to kind of get a sense of what was going on and who was who and the sense of the story and stuff like that <clears throat> um so it is, uh, it takes its time, which I really appreciate. I really do. Yeah, it's it's not trying to um, force it down your throat. No, it's it's right. it's not midi. It's not what a midichlorian is. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> ah! Oh my god. Uh Hey, by the way, Metaclorians are awesome. It totally works into the story and everything. No, no, it doesn't. No, I'm sorry. Who, who's the idiot who thought of this idea? Oh, the guy that thought of the whole thing. Damn. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, yeah. No, it's it's worst idea in the freaking Star Wars universe. I could not believe they went there. Oh man. Yeah. I'm assuming Dave or Dave. I'm assuming Alan that you haven't seen the show of which we speak. No, 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 no. Well, if you like science fiction at all, then uh, do give it a look. It's kind of it's kind of nice. All right. Is there more than one season? By the way, of it, uh, season two starts very soon. Actually, um, okay. I just saw an ad for it. The other day, uh, episode one airs on the 22nd of April. So in about two weeks time. Um, wow. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what uh, I did watch the season two trailer, like the big, long three minute thing. So um, it felt pretty. It felt pretty good. Mm, I, nice. I granted the trailer doesn't spoil anything. So which I was very pleased with. Oh my God. Um, so I was just I, curious if they were, you know, just kind of expanding on the original movie and that was it. It was just meant to be sort of a, a mini mini series, you know, I wasn't sure if they were going to continue. No, they totally are. And, uh, you know, awesome. I think it should be interesting. Um, any other I'm words? Out of beer, I'm out of beer too. So, uh, we'll leave it at that boys and girls. Thank you for coming to episode done, done. Blah. 100 <laughs> done done hundred done 38 um it is uh it's wednesday night this is where we are on wednesday nights this is for a long time now 138 times we've been here and we'll be here for at least amazing 138 more times yes so let's see i gotta do the math 138 plus 138 <laughs> equals 276 so Episode 275 will be a really interesting show. Uh, I'll be naked, and so will Dave. <laughs> and we're going to furp. And Alan might have hair. And we might furp. And we're going to furp a lot. <laughs> a lot of furping. No chance of non-furpage. On that note, thank you all for watching. See you guys next time. Follow us on all the social things, and click subscribe buttons and all that kind of crap. You know what to do. And I'm not going to bother telling you each time, because, you know, we do this for fun. This is us. How do you turn this thing off? <laughs> <laughs>